Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Selescu. And I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Are you looking for a great gift idea for somebody on your shopping list? Today, we will be looking at the Sweat Hogs Dream Machine by MPC. Now this is another model kit on loan to us from our good friend James who has a collection of very old stuff. However, you can see all of our available model kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I will leave a link in the description below. Now let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. Welcome back to another model kit unboxing video. Welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at the MPC Sweat Hogs Dream Machine. Now last time we looked at a dream machine, it was Fonzie's Dream Rod. And there is one thing cool about MPC back in the 70s and early 80s, is that they seem to have a lot of model kits that were tied into TV shows. And this one of course, the Sweat Hogs, are from Welcome Back Cotter. Now this model car looks very much like a 1970s Cadillac Eldorado. Of course one that's quite, you know, as we would say now, pimp my ride. This was sort of a popular style back in, I guess it was New York or something, where they'd put these big grills on and then extend out these headlights in this really bizarre fashion. Very popular. If you actually had one of your cars like this back in the day, let us know in the comment section down below. Because I do see these things, they kind of appear in like old 70s movies like Shaft and uh, James Bond's Live and Let Die. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So again, a very popular style of the era. Here on the side of the box we have the Sweat Hogs Dream Machine. This is a 125th scale model kit. It comes with the Sweat Hog figures, custom street machine, custom open top, custom front and rear, big V8 engine, vinyl tires, custom wheels, white wall tires, big custom headlines. Of course from Welcome Back Cotter. So right here we have Vincent Vinny Barbarino as played by John Travolta and then Arnold Dingfelder Horshack, which was played by Ron Pali Palinio. Uh, I butchered that. Anyway, Freddy Percival Boom Boom Washington, as played by Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. And finally, this is a big one, Juan Luis Pedro Filippo de Juveos Epstein, as played by Robert Hegias. And here we have the three-quarter rear shot of the car, as well as the back end, front end, your white wall tires, and the four sweat hogs. And now let's take the lid off this box and check out the sweat hogs dream machine. And as you can see, we get our instructions right up front, and then a nice bag containing all our white plastic components. I can see a few of the sweat hogs in the bag. Then we've got our glass sitting here with the nice little hook, <laughs> much like on a clothing rack. Oh, in this corner we have our headlights. And then we've got our chrome detail right here, as well as the tires and it looks like our taillights. So here we have our Sweat Hogs Dream Machine and all our little stars from Welcome Back Cotter. <laughs> And then as we open this up, we can see again, it's the typical brochure type of the two page fold flip and triple fold. Here we have our wheels and tires, and there's a nice big fat white wall insert, as well as these sort of sombrero style hubcaps. And then we've got our front rubber tires and our front wheel backs and, a, and the rear wheel back as well. These ones, of course, have the peg going through, and these ones are flat. Next, we can take a look at our engine block. We've got our right and left hand sides, as well as our transmission, and our intake manifold, front timing cover, our oil pan, cylinder heads, and our exhaust manifolds. Panel 3 shows the completion of our engine with the air cleaner, the carburetor, the distributor, 
upper radiator hose, valve covers, alternator, oil filter, pulleys, and our fan. Here we have our interior, which is a nice tub. It's got these bucket seats with headrests in, a center gear shift, as well as our steering wheel, so that means there's a console down here, and our dashboard. Panel 5 shows our chassis with our differential and exhaust pipes and drive shaft all molded as one piece, dropping into place. Then our metal axles go through these blocks and the wheel backs will go into place and our wheels will pop onto the wheel backs. Panel 6 shows our engine dropping into the chassis and our battery going into place. Now one thing that I did say, and I made a mistake on this, is that I thought this was a Cadillac Eldorado. It is in fact a 1976 Pontiac Grand Prix. So here we have this nice Pontiac motor being dropped into the chassis. So I guess the Sweat Hogs and the Fawns were sort of having the same dream as their envisionment of a dream car because they were both Pontiacs. Anyway, here's our body and we've got a radiator shield and our radiator wall as well as our radiator. Then we've got our firewall gluing onto the interior. We have to remove our hook and remove the straps to glue our windshield and back glass into place. Panel 8 shows the front grill being inserted as well as these nice big headlight rings and our headlights. And then we have our side markers going in the front. Out back we have our rear bumper gluing into place and you also install the red tail lights and I do believe you paint one of these clear as a backup light. Panel 10 shows our hood being placed on and then our body dropping onto the chassis and then here we have these nice side pipes which will glue down here on the lower rocker panels. This panel of our instruction sheet shows our four figures and what they look like and also their relationship to the car. So here we have Horshack bending over to look in the trunk, Washington standing up talking with Barbarino and Epstein. And it says to paint all these figures as shown on the box top. Here we have the Sweat Hogs Pontiac Grand Prix. And again, you can see there's a lot of pieces to remove. There's a brace across the hood and then you have to remove these pieces, but they were installed here, of course, for the molding process so that the top of the windshield frame wouldn't be all bent out of shape. You do cut these out to make the convertible. Again, lots of nice detailing. The vinyl top is really beautiful on there. And we've got our door handles. The little side marker lamps will go into place. Again, remove that bracket frame. Front end is quite nice, actually. And then as you go along the back, you can see the Grand Prix logo right on the trunk lid. Again, it does very much resemble the Eldorado, but uh, this is, of course, Pontiac version. And uh, there we go. Okay, now who can tell me what this is? Ooh, 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 Mr. Cora, Mr. Cora. Yes, Horshack, can you tell us what this is? Yeah, this is the undercarriage. Yeah, exactly. So here we have the undercarriage. As you can see, there is some nice detail in it. I do believe this was a screw together at one point because you can see the little circles where the screws would have been covered over to make the rest of the gas tank here. Again, the detailing underneath is quite nice, very much like the Pontiac GTO again. A uh, lot of flash again. That's really weird for a kit that popped out in 76, the same exact year as the show. You got so much flash. Like, what was MPC like back in the day? Well, I guess judging from like the Dukes of Hazard kits and everything else, I think I pretty much know. Now apart from the figures, these are all the white plastic components that make up the rest of the parts trees. Now the first piece we can look at is our hood for our Grand Prix here. And again, very nice detail. You can see the vents in there and these little bug eye AMC Matador type things that are going on. Now, how does it fit to the actual body of the car? Again, quite a nice fit. There we go. You can see that the gaps will be quite small in that hood, so that's always good. And then turning over, you can see our fireproof matting. Now, there are a lot of flash and sink marks underneath here, which will have to be cleaned up with that number 16 hobby blade. But I do believe once you put in the effort to this, it will look quite nice. 
Here we have our interior bucket, which again is mostly molded as one piece. However, that being said, the detail in it is quite nice. You have the pleated seats. The side door panels have adequate trim into them. Center console, you've got your carpet. Again, there's sink marks in the floor. There's one of the headrests. There was a lot of loose pieces in the bag, even though it was sealed. And then you can see the old Fun Dimensions script in here, which was part of, again, General Mills. So can you imagine a serial company making model kits using the MPC licensing? Here we have our exhaust pipes, mufflers, drive shaft, differential, and rear suspension components, all molded as one solid piece. And the detail on here is not really that deep, although this will give your car the actual look of a real car from underneath. Here we have the parts tree that contains our engine block as well as the radiator and rad support and our shield up front for our fan. So as you can see, the detail is quite nice. This engine does have the frost plugs in it. If we look at the other half that fell off, you can see the nice standard transmission on the side. And again, our intake manifold and exhaust pipes, uh, or exhaust manifolds, and then our front timing cover. Very nicely done, but again, you've got these mold marks everywhere and quite a bit of flash for a kit that came out the same year as the show. Now here we have our interior for our Pontiac Grand Prix, and I did actually get to drive in one of these way back in the 90s. And the dashboard and the steering wheel look very correct for the Pontiac that it is. You can see again that Sport Pontiac wheel. Very nicely done. The uh, instruments on here are great. You can listen to the Welcome Back Cotter theme on the radio. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> but uh, yeah, overall really nice. You can be pleased with the way this turned out. Even though again you got the flash to deal with but uh, no mold marks off the back or anything. And I thought I'd bring this air cleaner also into view of the camera. It's got the wing nut on the top, just like the real thing. You will have to drill out that end, of course. But overall, all these components look nice. It's just a matter of removing that flash. Here we have the firewall. And again, the detail on this is excellent. You can see all the wires in place going to that heater motor and everywhere else. And you've also got your brake booster. There's only one problem. You've got a really unique sinkhole right in between all the action. Here we have the parts that make up the sweat hog figures. And again, they're just as nicely detailed as Fonzarelli was. You can see all the great stuff on them. It is kind of hard again to catch with the uh, white plastic on this camera. But if you put them together, you do get nice uh, parts fit as well as great detail. So there they all are in their glory. Again, uh, just so hard to see with the glare from the lights I've got. But again, nice figures that will paint up and look, look good. And here we have the parts tree which makes up our chrome components. And much like the Fonzarelli dream car, we have sweat hogs molded into the center plate. There's our Pontiac sombrero style hubcaps, as well as our front bumper and that huge grille. There's our headlight housings, the rear bumper, as well as our oil pan, side pipes, and valve covers, and a bunch of other goodies. So let's bring this up to the camera. Again, a nice black wash will greatly go into that grille. And then there's our back rear bumper. License plate says sweat hogs. On the Fonzarelli Dream Ride, I did find a Fonzarelli license plate, but I didn't get to show that. The chrome is a little bit eh for the 70s. This is sort of what was going on. But again, it doesn't really affect the front too much. A little bit of yellow showing through on the wheels. That's kind of a shame. But overall, I mean, the detail is crisp, but the chrome eh, could be better. Here we have the glass components for our Sweat Hogs Dream Machine. And again, you can see the rear window and the front glass. You have to remove the hook and these braces. Then we've got our front headlights. And sadly, I could only find one of the rear tail lamps, which again is not quite a good thing. And last on the list is our tires. These are Goodyear's, although they don't say what type of Goodyear, just that it has Goodyear on it. And then there's our white wall insert, which was on the plastic parts tree. 
which of course would press into shape just like that. So you get a full bodied white wall on there. The tread pattern is quite nice on this. And on this side there is no wording or anything. And you must remove that web from the center in order to get your wheels to fit on these tires. And that completes our look at the MPC Sweathog's Dream Machine from 1976. And if you've built this model kit back in the past, we would love to see pictures of this, especially your painted Sweathog figures from back in the day. And you can share those pictures over on our Facebook page. I'll leave the link in the description below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at the Sweathog's Dream Machine by MPC. Tune in next week when we open up the lid on another great model kit. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Hit that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, happy model building! <laughs>